What is up, everybody, and welcome to episode 72 of the Trainer Scoop podcast. Very, 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 very excited to be joined for a second time, almost a year later, by Mr. Max Strozny. Max, say what's up to the people, dude. What's going on, everybody? I'm really excited to be back. This was a really fun podcast to be a part of, I guess, a year ago. It's crazy that it's been that long. Uh, so really excited to be back. David, thank you for having me and looking forward to the podcast, man. Dude, I saw that it was August 20th of 2022 when I dropped the first one. And I was just like, what? Like, that seems unreal to me. How fast time has flown since uh, we've been on a podcast together, man. But, you know, back then I did a little sleuthing and some of the things we talked about were your prep. Um, yeah. So lots to catch up on there because goodness, you have just absolutely ate the old Max of 2022. Uh, we <laughs> yes. talked about balancing student life with training, with all of the high ambitions that you have. And it, it was a great podcast, man. So dude, I am super excited to have you back for, uh, for a part two and to catch up with you, see how everything's been and uh, see what's to come for you, bro. Yeah, man. I'm pumped to be here. It is really, really crazy that like, uh, like when I think about it, that a year ago, I was like in the thick of prep, you know, I was, I was like almost a month out from, no, a couple months out from competing. That's mm -hmm. crazy. And yeah, definitely, definitely quite a different story now, nowadays. <laughs> Dude, you're looking massive. Numbers in the gym are going crazy. You just lifting, loving life and live life, exactly. lift all those, all those L things that Midwestern Sushi, pancakes. Ooh, all the above. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, not not so much last not, year. Not, not together, like you know, they're all separately. Just separately. to clarify, I saw a story of you with like two crazy. big ass plates of sushi. Tell me more. Yep. Yeah, man, I've been going out for sushi, something like you know, once a week or something like that. Maybe once every other week. Uh, but sushi, we have like a really great all you can eat place around here. Uh, people are always a little scared of it because it's like, you know, a <laughs> landlocked sushi place, but so far I haven't ran into anything. So fingers crossed that it continues that way. <laughs> hey man, if there's one thing I'll gamble my life on, it's all you can eat sushi. That's a fact. <laughs> That's a fact. A great thing to gamble your life on. Right, right. Dude. So will you catch the people up for those who might've listened about a year ago? How did that prep go? Um, and where are we at now with, with training? We'll, we'll stick to training first, training, eating, all those things. Yeah, sure. So yeah, a year ago I was on, on prep. Uh, I prepped for, I think 18 weeks long. Uh, but I had jumped in a show after like 14 weeks of prep. Um, honestly, prep was pretty easy for me. Uh, I like I've, I've talked to other people about this. They're just like, fuck you, man. You know, but like, like prep really wasn't that difficult for me. I, uh, I like, I've always been a super small kid. So like dieting has always been just like so easy for me. Like I wasn't even hungry for the first like half of prep, probably because like I would always be like force feeding. Like, I don't think I had hunger for like a good six months before prep even like, like started. And then, uh, like I didn't have hunger until like, I don't know, six or eight weeks in. So I was like really in the thick of it by the time I actually started getting hungry and that was pretty chill. And I just did you know, steps. I wasn't doing any crazy cardio. Like that, that was a really fun thing. Um, uh, reflecting on like the show days, like I would be talking to people and they would be like, dude, I was doing like an hour of cardio seven days a week. I was like, nice. Like, <laughs> like literally all I was doing was like walking to class, like getting like 12, 12 to 14,000 steps a day. And that's what I did for cardio. And the rest just came from a calorie deficit. So that all went really well. Um, but but so real quick shows went yeah, you were hanging on at what, like twenty six hundred calories for like the long, like a long time, right? Am I? Yes. <laughs> yes. How long did I that last? The, that honestly lasted like most of prep. Like I literally did not like we started prep at three thousand calories. Like my weight was coming out a little bit, but not as fast as we wanted it to. So we dropped it down to like thirty eight, and then or no, thirty eight, like 18? like twenty eight, and then we eventually oh. brought it down to like yeah, tw like twenty six hundred. And that's like where we stayed for a really long time until like, I would say it, it might've even been like after that um, first show that I like dropped calories a little bit lower, but yeah, that makes that's sense. pretty much where my calories were at. 
And yeah. yeah, when I was at like my shows and stuff, people were saying that like, yeah, I was on 1800 calories and I was like, fuck dude. Yeah. <laughs> Real quick yeah. question in between there as well. Um, and, and to, to, before I ask the question, I just want to say like in between those two shows, like you got scary lean, like it was wild to see how lean you got. You were what one sub 170 or sub 160 maybe. My lowest weight on prep was 159.8. Yeah, yeah, dude. That's <laughs> wild. Cause you're like a taller guy. You're like what, six two, six, six I'm, three? I'm 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 six one. I'm six six one. one. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, dude, but that's yeah, wild. It's very light for somebody who's six one. I had no idea that I would get down there. I was like hoping that I'd be like 170 on stage, but I think for a lot of naturals and for a lot of people in general, when it's your first show, like you're smaller than you think. Like it sucks yeah. to say that, but that's just the way it is. Hundred percent. Dude, it was it was nuts. Um, so my question that I was gonna ask was about the steps as your main form of kind of like fueling that caloric deficit. So honestly, I think it was like the last episode of Bro Chat or or Bodybuilding and Bullocks, whatever podcast, uh, with Fuad, and they were kind of like critiquing the steps. And I was like, man, I have never had an issue with steps, and I've been doing it for almost three years now, ever since I heard RP first talking about it. Like, do you think there's ever a scenario where cardio like planned cardio would be more advantageous or or can you think of any downfalls of the steps because honestly i can't it's always worked out pretty well for me i don't really think i can think of any downside when it comes to like the end goal being just fat loss you know yeah like i can understand downsides for like you know heart health and stuff i understand like cardio implementations for that but yeah. Uh, I feel like for bodybuilding in general, like, no, like, like steps are the way to go. Yeah. It's just such an easy way to intertwine it with your life. And like, yeah, I even have some clients that are like, really like, I, I hate to call them out, but like a little bit like anal retentive to be on PC. And they're <laughs> like, Oh, like, I want to, I want to think of it like, like a cardio session. And I'm like, okay, we'll go fucking walk on the treadmill until you get 15,000 steps or whatever. Like, <laughs> so it all kind of like, pieces together um I, but yeah I'm, 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 I'm not gonna lie when you said anal retentive i was thinking something completely different but like their anus is is that. <laughs> that's actually part of my onboarding process um you know anal's a thing and uh it's something that i screen all my... <laughs> meanwhile i have like a new client a girl client that i'm like onboarding today <laughs> okay yeah all right yep, yep. maybe we edit that out <laughs> nah, nah i'm not that shit out uh, <laughs> ain't no oh, retentive wow. um what, what's a better synonym for that they, they're meticulous in their uh sure. yeah methodologies yeah. Yep. yeah i'll just uh yeah. go back and take a yeah okay i know how to fix this um hey you're the edit guy too you you can work your way out of a, a choppy situation i'm sure oh absolutely Okay. Okay. So back to the topic at hand, um, you know, you did pretty well in these shows. Can you hit on that real quick? Just like where you, where you left off with them? Yeah. Um, so I would say like the main thing is to mention are like, like the, the like open, um, classes that I competed in. Like, I mean, like novice classes or novice classes, like, yeah, of course I won novice classes, but like, they're just novice classes, you know? So, so like with the open classes, I got, um, second place in both uh open bodybuilding and also in um open classic at my first show and then in my second show i just complete competed in bodybuilding i think that's what i did maybe it's the other way around i can't even really remember my memory is so dog shit to be honest with you <laughs> um but at my second show um there were like a, like some much bigger people there like they're we're just like dudes like I was like talking to them backstage they were like 200 pounds like stage lean and I was like shit dude like <laughs> the, you held your own now dude. like yeah like I have a good I I have like a good structure and everything like once I have that kind of muscle mass if I can ever get there like sure I could be competitive against them but like like 160 pounds versus 200 pounds yeah I got absolutely swamped by them <laughs> but uh yeah so at that show I think I placed um worth or something like that i'm not exactly sure but i definitely didn't place like top three or anything because those people are just so massive right do you have any preference as to which division you'll pursue like let's say you want to get a pro card in the next 
couple of years, like, would it be classic? Would it be uh, regular bodybuilding? That's a really good question. I, I find myself kind of like drifting between the two classes. I feel like shape wise, I work better for classic, but I like the bodybuilding poses a lot. Yeah, dude. So there's something about like, it. Yeah. 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 So, so that's a little bit of a difficult question. I feel like I'd probably end up doing both of them just because I like w when you're competing, it's, it's just fun to do both, you know, but like a lot of the classic poses, like, I feel like you also just have to be like so ridiculously muscular to like make those poses look good. Um, and like with bodybuilding poses, I feel like you can look like really good with bodybuilding poses without being like that insanely big. Really? I would think it would be the other way. No? Well, like, I I think the, uh, uh, like, the poses I'm thinking of is, like, like the side mantis, for example. Like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Yoked arms. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So that's, okay. like, something that, yeah, but that's yeah. something you have in, like, classic, uh, you know, so. Right, I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah, like, to really, like, bring out the aesthetic, like, and then have that look down, like, you have to yeah. you have to be carrying some mass on you okay i'm with you now yeah. okay cool 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 yeah yeah so so i would say i'm not like super married to either division i like them both uh and i'll kind of see like what my calling is next time i compete which will probably be in quite some time so yeah for sure for sure yeah man um kind of like i feel like i kind of want to steer this in the direction of keeping it linear on a timeline so like personally how was school and everything during that time as well? Maybe we'll we'll talk about like school up to like this school in life up until like you started massing up and, and until the winter. Like how was everything yeah. balancing that stuff going? Uh good. So um why while, while I was prepping, I was actually going through like the most difficult class I've ever gone through. So like pe like people had told me before I started prep, like, hey, you really should not be prepping during this class. And I was like, but man, I'll be fine, you know, I'll be fine. <laughs> uh, and and the class I was going through was gross anatomy. So I was like dissecting cadavers like every day for 10 weeks. Uh, so that's what I was doing during the summer while I was prepping. Um, and honestly, it wasn't too bad. Like I just ran into a bit of brain fog towards the end of like that class. So the last like week or two. Um, and by that point, like I had already like really gotten into groove with the class and everything and like prep was going well. And then like, I didn't have to like really start digging until like the class was over and stuff. So it ended up working out pretty well. And then I just had the rest of the summer to just like work and uh, train and just focus on prep and stuff, which um, all went really well. And uh, I really didn't have any like big negatives or anything as far as like school or life went or anything like that. I mean, well, before prep started though, I broke up with my uh, girlfriend. So that was a little bit interesting. Um, bro that's I, why I your prep was so damn good with, yeah I, I came into prep with uh quite a bit of motivation so I came in on demon mode bro <laughs> that's right whatever you want to call it yo and and i already know in that gross anatomy class you know like sometimes the cadavers you know god bless them for donating their body to science they're just not quite up to par you know certain certain maybe insertions certain muscles are a little bit more challenging to see just because they've never been hypertrophied but I know, I already know yeah. the professor in the, the lab TAs had you just rip off the shirt at some point. And hey, you probably were up there standing standing on the podium, hitting like a rear <laughs> rear lat or something. That's how they, <laughs> that's how the kids learned. <laughs> Dude, I wish that happened. <laughs> yeah, you were that lean to the point where it was like, you were literally in a, I, a, I, a I, I was really so lean. I, I was like reflecting on, on, on like some of the pictures with uh, a friend of mine actually yesterday when I was at sushi and we were looking at like some of my like back pictures and stuff where like my, 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 my lower lats have always been like interesting to where they'll be like, you know, striated at the bottom and they'll like literally look like the Christmas tree, but the, it's the bottom of my lat. Yeah. You know? so, the, so, so, so that was pretty cool. And getting glute striations and everything was also something that uh, I didn't really expect I'd be able to do on my first prep, but it ended up happening and stuff. So it was pretty sweet. Yeah, I did. So if you could off the top of your head, just fire off like three tips for, I mean, obviously very few people are going to be balancing the extremes that you went to, but like balancing fitness and pers like excelling academically, what are like three quick off the rip takes that you can provide to people? Yeah. 
Um, well, number one, I think is like sleep is mega important. Um, of course, it's super important for a fat loss phase in order to make that go well. And I think it's also something that is like, like the stereotypical college student really gives a bad rap to, you know, like uh, you will just be like staying up super late studying. You'll be waking up early and studying just like caffeinated all the time. Mm -hmm. And if you don't actually give yourself the time to sleep, like you won't be able to like actually um, use your brain to the extent that you could be using it. Like you're literally going to be selling yourself short if you're not sleeping enough. So that that's probably like my first thing I would say is make sure you're sleeping good. Um, next up would be to like have a good routine in place, especially like on a bodybuilding prep. I, I, I feel like it's pretty easy on a bodybuilding prep to get into a really good routine um, because you do have a deadline and um, you, you know what the end goal is. And hopefully you'd have a coach too. I had a coach still at that time. That's definitely important, um, especially if you're going to go through something as stressful as a prep, stressful, um, or, or, or like preps are stressful just because it's like, you know, your body does not want to be there at all. And if you um, just go through it on your own, like some people can't do that, but uh, especially your first time, definitely have a coach. Um, so those are my first two things. And last one is also like, don't take yourself too seriously, I think. Uh, on bodybuilding preps, people really kind of get the idea that they just have to be an absolute animal all the time. And like, people are just like pissed on prep, like they treat everybody they live with or are around like shit, like you don't have to be like that. Um, that like that stuff is all a choice. I don't care what anybody says. I think it's absolutely a choice of how you treat other people. Um, but like, if you like, don't take yourself too seriously, I think that is really like, can be helpful and um, will lend you a lot of success when it comes to like doing a body movement prep or a fat loss phase or whatever during a stressful situation. Dude, those are some great, great tips. Um, man, I'll tell you what, like you were talking about the first thing you said with sleep and making sure that that's on point, you know, the the interesting mix of like stims in there too. Um, yep. Two things. So man, I completely neglected that. I was like the dude that was trying to go to the gym at like 5.30 right when it opened in undergrad. And like, I got a lot done, but like just cognitively, you're not there like 100% if you're yeah, okay. severely underslept. And I don't know about you at your campus, but like at Ohio State, right? They had these like hot Red Bull girls that would like drive around in the little Red Bull Mini Cooper and just hand out energy drinks. But I hit them up several times. I would walk back and forth get my steps in just grabbing some red bull i actually told the girl i was dating with at the time dating at the time i was like you should pursue that job because like that would be sick um uh -huh. great that great ad <laughs> great advertising and marketing just giving kids free uh energy drinks which of course you're gonna keep buying more but also yeah like something you got to be cognizant of of course no one's gonna listen if you're if you're 20 21 years old you're probably you're probably not gonna listen to us, but keep it in mind. Um, man, it's it's been really cool to see you work with your coach, and especially I feel like I mean you guys have always been cool, but seeing that relationship grow, especially like shout out to Sam Max's coach, uh, definitely amazing. Ch ch check him out on Instagram. I'll have to link his stuff too because he's really great content. But yeah, and then, and then seeing you like being there for him throughout his like. I guess he did like a prep and some crazy running recently, right? And you were there to document a lot of it. Dude, he is the seriously like one of the most incredible athletes I've ever met. Well, he yeah. is the most incredible athlete I've ever met. Just the the shit he does is just unbelievable. He Nuts. um so like he's been uh basically a hybrid athlete for the past like year or two. So he's been like doing a lot of running and um also like training still really hard like I train with him like twice a week in the gym but like on the weekends he'll like go ahead and do like a run for x amount of miles you know uh before he actually so he did a bodybuilding show last weekend and um he like the week before that he had ran a half marathon just like casually like I had been like with him like recording this thing and he uh, the first thing he told me that day is just like I think I'm gonna run a half marathon uh out today and i'm just like word <laughs> i'm just like 
you you do what you do sam like he just does this shit and like i've never heard the man complain once like he just says like he has so much going on dude like all the time like in his life but and yet he still like does so many of these crazy athletic feats and just like i never hear a single complaint out of him so super impressive guy uh seriously an incredible role model i've had a huge pleasure uh like doing everything with him when it comes to like prep or just hanging out or training or whatever uh so it's been a really good time so i I'm, I'm glad to have him around yes sir man yeah i'm really happy that you have someone like that in your corner too that's that's gonna be it's already been big it's gonna keep being big so hang on to that one um and yeah dude like your last point i remember like john meadows in these videos talking about like just like don't you don't have to be that stereotypical angry douche body butter when you're deep into prep like yes it's gonna suck I can only imagine how much it, how hard it would be because I've never been there. But like, dude, yeah, that was one of his things. And that's a really good point to make too. So, yeah, yeah. I, I've actually talked to Sam about this and, and like, we have the same opinion on that. And um, he was like, yeah, like you need to go into a prep, like knowing that it's going to suck. Like, it's like, yes, this is going to be terrible. Um, and like, kind of like mentally prepare yourself for it. And then when the time comes, you're just like, oh, well, this is exactly what I expected. Of course, this is going to suck. Of course, it's going to be hard. Um, but then you just got to kind of persevere through it and do your thing, you know? Yeah, man. And, yeah. And especially with like bodybuilding, too. I don't even need to cut you off, but especially with like bodybuilding, too. Like, I, I feel like it's um, <clears throat> since we choose to do it, we literally are, are like flushing money down the drain to do this, <laughs> you know, especially bodybuilding shows. Just yeah. like 500 bucks, like in total. To, just to do a show and like so silly. Stay, stand on stage for 10 minutes you know so but, silly but if like, you think about it, it. it's all stuff we sign up for and yeah. it, it, it's just not stuff that i think we um one should complain about but two also just make other people's lives miserable yeah man no that's that's a really really balanced take i appreciate your insights man because i know you're doing a great job at it really impressed by your ability to to balance everything and excel the way you do I mean, it's just, it just goes to show you got that work ethic, bro. And that'll take you a long way. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. So everyone in the audience, be more like Max. <laughs> It'll take on. you far. Um, <laughs> dude. Okay, cool. So we have like pretty, pretty good idea of, of how that went, but I want to talk about recent times into now uh, because you have had an insane off season an insane growth phase man, you're making some fucking gains, dude. I'll tell you what, like you, you look, I never would have pictured you looking like this a year ago. <laughs> Do you feel like that? Jeez, bro. No, no, no. I, I In the really best way possible. That. Like I, I have never seen someone make gains like that. Not, not that you couldn't do it. I've just never seen it naturally. Yeah. If you are now. Damn, dude. Well, I, 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 I really appreciate you saying that. Well, I haven't started shit. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just to put it out there. <laughs> um, yeah, po post show was a really, really interesting time. It, it, it was like honestly, like the amount of hunger I was experiencing was like straight scary. Like the weight gain was like fast. I was gaining like three pounds a week, like out of the gate for for quite some time. Um, and so I had to eat like an insane amount of fiber and stuff like that. Um, shout out to, uh, Dylan McCartney. He had like helped me out a lot, uh, with like figuring out like food choices and stuff as I came out of prep. Dude, that was really important. The but, micro King. This yeah. dude has his micros dialed in and he like, I know he tracks stuff on like chronometer and everything. Oh, like, oh, oh, he said, yeah, yeah. The micro King. Yeah, dude, yeah, absolutely. He is. Yeah. Yeah. Very, yeah. very good approach with that stuff. Yeah, I, I was literally eating like over 100 grams of fiber each day just to like, like keep things slow because I, it it, it could have been crazy. I could have ballooned up to like 200 pounds in like, you know, yeah. a few weeks or something like that. Yeah. Like that's how, how crazy the hunger is. Uh, but yeah, over the off season so far, I've uh, basically gone up from 160 well, pounds is my like lowest weigh in on prep up to about 200 pounds. Um, so it's a pretty nice like. 40 pound weight gain in uh like a, about a year i i like got up to 200 actually like a few months ago though so uh, i think that was after like something like 30 ish 30 some weeks 
Um, That's so crazy. It was a lot of weight gain and stuff, but yeah, I, I gained a ton of muscle after prep and it was pretty sweet, man. It's been a good time. Yo, I feel like the ratio of like muscle to fat tissue that you've put on is pretty nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like it, it unheard of. Okay. So 40 pounds. <laughs> I I don't want to throw a number out there because I feel like I'm about to sound like a crazy motherfucker. How much of that do you think is muscle? Um, man, I I I honestly have like no clue. Well, yeah. like so I I've gotten uh, a DEXA done uh, recently, and I'm pretty sure I was I was like twelve percent or something. Yeah. Um, after I had done a mini cut. No, I, th I think it was 11% after a mini cut. Um, and probably on stage, I was probably, you know, like four or five or something like that. Um, so I'm not sure what that calculation would lead to, but uh, yeah, Dude, I, it, I could figure that a good out. Amount of muscle. I don't know what I, I don't know where my <laughs> pen is. I think I put it in my bag. Okay. Yeah, Dude, like, that's a YouTube video editor. Uh, I like I see this like like screen effect where it's like like the 4K like <laughs> like, uh, like I like numbers coming out at you. <laughs> yeah, that's me right now. Okay, but I mean yeah. honestly, dude, that's crazy. Like, yep. Have you thought about that? That's pretty nuts. Uh, honestly, man, like like I'm always just like so focused on the process. I don't yeah. really like think about it too much. But uh, yeah, when I like yeah. Uh, um especially recently like I'll, I'll look in the mirror sometimes i'm just like fuck yeah you know like i i i've made a lot of games and it's, it's been a really good time good good bro um that's awesome any uh off the cuff training tips or new things that you've learned that you feel like could be worth mentioning your keys yeah to i would say uh well like one one new thing i've been messing around a little bit with is like lengthened partials <laughs> i saw um, your post about, i think lengthened your story. partials are yeah, yeah, length and partials are an interesting thing. Today was like my like first legit time like programming them in and really like really giving them a good shot. Like I've I've messed with them a little bit in the past. Um, but I think those are like a, a, a huge thing, especially on like movements that really bias the stretch. So like like if you're doing like lateral raises on a machine or on like cables or something like that, it's a great place to do them. Or like uh, you know, like the like the facing away like free motion like yep. bicep curls oh yeah that would be a great one to do nuts um, it just destroys your shoulders yeah dude yes seriously and it's yeah definitely more conducive for um different exercises like i don't know who the hell would ever do like lengthened partials on like barbell squats or something i'm sure some trevor. crazy motherfucker does that but trevor but Fulbright. that's not something that <laughs> does he really yes well not barbell but um <laughs> Uh, yeah smith machine yeah 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 uh so yeah that's something i've messed around a little bit with and it's been i i i think that's really got something to it like the pump i got today was just yeah. unbelievable in my shoulders um so that's definitely one thing of course um you guys have probably heard of a shit ton on this podcast because david always has like really great guests on here um and uh you know like full range of motion and controlling the eccentrics and stuff especially like towards the stretch like i feel like like whenever i'm training i always like make sure that i'm going slowest like really close to the stretch like the bottom half of the eccentric is really where i slow down so mm -hmm. it's almost like i would say when i'm like doing an eccentric it's almost like an exponential so it's like yeah it's like pretty quick right away because like yeah. there's not a lot of stretch up at the like the top half of the eccentric but when you get to the like the bottom half on like uh, like a dumbbell press or something like that like that's a really great time to really slow down and stretch and pause and stuff like that that's a good point so that's kind of how i've been like going about a lot of movements recently is um like that that kind of control that's a that's a good point i might have to try that because like i mean yeah like if you're thinking of that dumbbell press example like uh, up until like right here where your arms are almost 90 like you're you're probably good to uh conserve a little bit of energy take that a little bit quicker exactly compared to yeah yeah so that's, that's a good point man I'm gonna yeah have to... i i i feel like it improves my stimulus to fatigue ratio i i see other people that are like unbelievable at training like shimmy and they'll be like slow the whole way and yeah. for him that 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 like probably is like his best sfr for that movement 
but um i feel like that's something you kind of gotta have to like mess around with a little bit um with yourself to see like what feels best and what works best for you so yeah good point man good point so we had linkedin partials and just uh the tempo has been some big changes right as well as that yep. so far yep got you cool yep, yep. A big focus recently yeah, dude. And I mean, we have a little bit of time before our poverty Zoom break. Funnily enough, Max popped through the great city of Indianapolis in what was that, like March or something? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. And we got together. It was a fucking awesome little weekend getting to see Max. We grabbed some tacos on Thursday. Um, mm-hmm. Then we linked back up and got just a baller. It literally sent me to the grave. I had to stop early. Because I went hypo. Right. A <laughs> dude, baller. Really yeah, sure. Yes, dude. A baller bicep and leg session, man. God, that yep. was a that was a great session. Um, we went in and it was really fun. Good to see you, of course, and meet you. But uh, dude, what were your thoughts on that little session? That was a good one. That was a fun one. Dude, honestly, like that was such a cool session because, like, you know, it it's like so cool to like meet people online and just like, you know, talk, like talk to people online and like, uh, uh, obviously become friends with them and, and stuff like that. Um, and like, like relate on like training and everything like that. But when you actually like are able to get together and, um, like train together, especially if you're like principals are the same, like there's not a lot of people out there that like really focus on technique and, like really think through like how they train and everything like that. So like when I get together with people like that, especially like team full round members, I think that's just like su- such a cool thing. It was really a great time. And also just to like, like see how down to earth and funny as fuck you are in person was a really good time. So uh, like, it was a really, really great session. I, I, I had a super good time and yeah, I was also toasted for days afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. I think I made it through like maybe five working sets of legs because we did like hamstring curls and then leg press. And I mean, we had some biceps before. Maybe I like missed time some nutrition, but I was down for the count after two sets of leg press. Like that was one of the, that was a great intensity session for legs. Like you were fucking sending it. I think we were all sending oh, yeah. it. Yeah, I was also like like basically in a deload too, because I was like with my parents on a vacation. Yeah. And um, yeah, like I had like, just uh so it was my first time trying the cybex leg press and, and i was just absolutely setting on that thing. and yeah. i was like sore for so long after that yeah. session dude it was ridiculous that was a good one it's also funny yeah. um the girl who i was dating at the time for those who don't know Alyssa, she i've trained with other people and Alyssa before like other dudes and, and she's like that was not fun like i didn't like that like it was not a good time but like we all had such a That's good what time she said <laughs> no, no, with you, she liked it, but like other dudes okay. I've trained with that, like, I'll just be like, oh, yeah, like, because we would always lift together. And I was like, yeah, just letting you know, like, I'm lifting with this guy today, like, lifting with a friend. And like, she was always like, yeah, I didn't like that. That was not fun. But like, when you were there, it was it was good. It went down well. So, nice. yeah, yeah, it was a good time for all. Glad you could make it through. And um, yeah, dude, in terms, I guess we have some more time. So real quick nutrition takeaways i know you mentioned um well what is what does it look like because you you mentioned you could have blown up but um it's not been mm-hmm. quite as it's been a good mass we could say yeah yeah uh so like nutrition takeaways from prep you're saying from from like the off season after prep yeah mm, mm, yeah from the off season um yeah i think uh i think you really gotta like meet yourself where you're at as far as hunger is and really like change up what you're eating based on that um so like of course so so like for me it was a really like gradual shift in like the like the food composition that I was eating as uh the off season went on so initially like I was saying earlier like I was just eating a ton of fiber I was actually eating like so much sweet potato carrots and pumpkin that my skin legit turned orange that's awesome um, <laughs> it, it 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 sounds like impossible. Like this dude's guy, like I, I, I like gotta be lying about this shit. Possible, but man. It, I was legit orange. Um, it's called like uh carotinemia, I think. Yeah. Um, so it's just like when you just have way too much beta carotene in your system and your skin literally turns orange. Motherfucker so, was an oompa uh, loompa out here off the fire. That was a really good time. <laughs> yeah. Um, and 
Like, oh, oh, like that's that's gonna get like uh I like so many girls when you bring a girl and they're just gonna be like, Oh, this guy has plants. I'm just like, Yeah, but not for you. I have them for me. <laughs> the plants are for me, but also yes. Yeah, um yeah. dude, that's awesome. Um not awesome that you turned orange, but uh awesome that you've made some I think I I think I don't know if you wanted to expound upon that more with uh not only the plants, but also just the off season nutrition. You turned orange and uh I mean I, there's gotta be another step in between then and now. So so continue yes. on. Yeah. So I had like turned pretty orange. I'd like gone to a uh I like Thanksgiving and stuff with my family and like I'd gotten like tons of comments from people at school and stuff like that. They're just like, Hey, did you compete in a bodybuilding show over the weekend? Like on a Monday? And I'm just like no why uh like why do you ask there's like oh your skin looks like really tan or like orange or something like that i'm just like mm. damn <laughs> that's crazy i didn't notice that and in then, the yeah <laughs> dude um and in uh i had also gotten like other comments about just like like uh, like why is your skin just orange just like out of the blue i i think i had somebody else ask me like if i had jaundice which is literally like your liver not working <laughs> <laughs> my man's made some interesting choices in his life that led to this Indeed. Point. i'm just like no i just eat way too many vegetables <laughs> yo um you you sometimes get like shit on on social media were they shitting on you like they did when you made that post about locking out your legs on a pendulum squat or something or was it just like are you okay oh uh, yeah yeah Honestly, on Instagram, I don't think I really got like too much of that. Okay. Um, because I know you've had it bad sometimes. I'm just like, God, man, these these comments yeah, would literally dude. give me an aneurysm. Yeah, I like surprisingly, I also got it like a lot from like competing too. Like, like people would comment on uh, I like videos or shit of me like flexing, like when I was like on prep or like at my bodybuilding show. They're just like, this guy's not trained at all in his life and shit like that. Because people all have, have this like expectation that that like these like natural body lords are gonna look like they're enhanced guys and of course that's not the case you know <laughs> and also the dudes that are commenting that don't even lift yeah right Promise. or yeah yeah like they they go to the gym three or four days a week and fuck around like it's nothing compared yep. to what you do um yeah. i have eventually just gotten to a point where i just like don't give a fuck at all but yeah yeah just just what it is that's still a process for me, but I'm, but I'm making strides on it like today. So I did a post the other day. It got a decent amount of views on reels. It was like, put some respect on the assisted, uh, assisted pull it machine. And one dude just commented and just said BS with like a lowercase S. And I was like, oh bro, fucking Andre. I'm about to tank your shit today. <laughs> but I, I took a deep breath. I was like, I'm not going to call him a fucking moron. Um, uh -huh. I'm going to hear him out and I'm going to, you know, argue to win or debate to win as Dr. Mike would say, you know, and, uh -huh. and, uh, I heard him out and he was dead fucking wrong on everything, bro. Like mm -hmm. every single part of why he said, uh, it was BS. He gave me the, uh, uh, the stability we're ta I was talking hypertrophy, right? So he said, yeah. doing body weight pull-ups will give you better stability. And instead of doing the machine, you should just put a band on it if you need assistance because it'll help you out of the hardest part of the lift i said but i'm gonna be nice <laughs> and and explain to you why you're wrong and then give you credit for maybe getting better at pull-ups you shouldn't use an uh -huh. assisted pull-up machine and he was like yeah, yeah that's what i was talking about i was like for sure for sure yep. yeah you Dude, do a good job uh, with it the uh the stabilizer thing is it's, it's so funny because i always hear people talk like talking about like stabilizer muscles or like bullshit like that <laughs> like, yeah I, I've seen every muscle in the goddamn body and there aren't any that are just for stabilization. <laughs> <laughs> this man's literally been there. Um, but I mean, <laughs> on that topic, dude, I'm interested to hear more about like the DPT process, how close you are to that. And, uh, you yeah. know, have you learned any practical things that you think directly relate to kind of like this microcosm, what it is to do bodybuilding and physique and all that? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I currently have two more years of uh, like graduate school until I'm done. So I did my first year of graduate school this past year. Uh, Gross Anatomy was like the start of it last summer. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I've, I've got about two years left. I've done like one 
clinical so far. It was a pretty short one. It was only like six weeks, like one day a week. So it was like really, really chill. Uh, but I'll be doing like actual clinicals uh, this upcoming year. Um, so I have like four, 10 week long clinicals. So that's going to be like a big part of the next uh, couple of years. And other than that, I just have a lot of like, uh, like normal in-person, you know, pl like classes and stuff like that, um, that will become like more and more applied. So like, I've really learned a lot of the foundational knowledge so far in, um, in PT school. Like we had just like really basic classes, like anatomy and kinesiology and, you know, and, 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 and like classes like that. So that's kind of what I've done so far. And then I'll be moving into like cooler classes, like applied neuroscience and um, like musculoskeletal conditions. So like learning about all the different like pathologies that there can be um, and like how to go about treating them and things like that. So that'll be pretty sweet. I would say like out of all the classes that I've done so far though, um, neuroscience is probably the coolest one that I did last semester. Neuroscience is cool as fuck. The brain is incredible. Um, so, so that was really sweet. And for like actual application to, um, uh, to like what we do here with bodybuilding, I think um, definitely knowing like origins and insertions of muscles is like really important and very helpful for bodybuilding. Um, like that has helped me a lot with technique, like to figure out like better technique cues and um, like what the important heavy hitter stuff is uh, for good techniques. So like a really good example of that, like just from my knowledge in, in, um, like anatomy and, and how the body works, like that has helped me a lot in like figuring out technique for like seated hamstring curls, for example, and knowing that I should have like my lower back arched, uh, because then that can put my pelvis like in an anterior pelvic tilt. So then I can stretch my hamstrings better at the stretch. Mm -hmm. Um, like that's something I learned, um, from like actually knowing where origins and insertions are. Um, so I think that's like one of the big practical things that I've learned. Uh, I, I also had a class that was honestly really boring, but it was helpful because it was about like how research is designed. Um, and like people talk a lot about, uh, like research in bodybuilding is just like, look at this article on PubMed or something like that. They, and they don't actually know what they're talking about or, or like how the synopsis the study was done. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and they don't really have like any not knowledge about like, what it all means. Um, so like having a class on that was honestly pretty helpful. So I can like actually interpret articles quite a bit mm -hmm. better. Um, and uh, other than that, like, school, school in general has always taught me that, like, effort is really important. Um, if you don't put any effort into something, you're not going to do well at it. So, um, like bodybuilding and school have, have always just like kind of came together as like, you know, these are both things I need to be putting a lot of effort in, putting a lot of quality effort in and like being really consistent over time. And of course, prioritizing the important stuff and, uh, just doing my best. So I think that's really kind of what I've learned from school and applied to bodybuilding. And it's also kept my life in a pretty decent structure to, to be able to like make it conducive to bodybuilding and building muscle and stuff. Yeah, dude. Let me tell you what, this kid was a weapon to begin with, right? He could balance school with prep, but think about after you become a doctor of physical therapy, you're about to be an absolute weapon out here on these streets, helping people. I mean, between your coaching, what you can do as a coaching capabilities, between helping people, what's like the goal setting for you, bro? Is it like helping athletes? What What is it? What does it look like for you? Yeah, I would say it, it. it's probably helping athletes, but I really want to, like, I have some, some like bigger plans when it comes to like more like long-term career goals. And I really feel like I want to uh, make physical therapy, like much more accessible to people because I think people like really need this stuff. And there's a lot of people that just like have no idea what to do with their bodies. And they just like are just kind of going about their day and then just like, just like standing around in like really shitty posture and, and, and like, they don't know what to do about it. Uh, besides just like stand up straight, like that, that's all they might hear, you know? Uh, and that I feel like just leads to a lot of people just, um, like, like, like having terrible posture all the time. Like, um, 
I like getting injured for stupid stuff that they could just like like do a little bit better. Um, so I I really think it's like like I want to be able to like reach more people with uh, PT, and it's not just something I want to do with like social media and stuff like that, but also like make it more accessible. So uh, somehow making it remote is like my real like long term end goal. And okay. PT is a very like in person hands on type of thing. And, uh, but like, I, I, I feel like, um, people really have these like mental blocks on like things that have been done a certain way for a really long period of time. Yeah. I really feel like there, there has to be a way to go about it. I haven't figured out exactly what that way might look like yet, but I, I am going to continue working at that. And I really think that eventually, uh, the, you know, things might come to fruition. I see where you're going with this. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's uh, you know how Dr. Mike has his Lamborghini collection. Mm -hmm. I, I do. feel like uh, yeah. you're going to have to, your, your real goal behind all these very positive and generous ulterior motives. Um, I think your goal is to also get a luxury car collection through means of <laughs> PT and monetization yes. Yes. of it. Yeah, like, what's it gonna the be? Amount like of Bugattis, I'm, I'm yeah, Bugattis. Of yes, bro. <laughs> it's gonna be nuts. Yes. All these Bugattis out here. Uh Dr. Dude, Mike's honestly, it'll probably be like all the most like rare exotic house plants. <laughs> <laughs> this man's got a fucking Venus fly trap that's six feet tall. <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> and like super colorful, and there's like like really cool holes and other colors on it. <laughs> yeah, dude. I know you've thought about it these exotic plants yeah you have some goals Dude, 100 percent. okay those are goals like like uh one one plant i really really want um is like uh, uh you know those like um bonsai trees those like really small like they're basically yeah. like dwarf trees like yeah. i want a bonsai tree but a cherry blossom oh that's a thing i i it, it's a thing they're very expensive but yeah that's definitely a goal right there hold up hold up hold up how do I share this motherfucker? <laughs> this could go very bad for me. Let's see what's up on the tabs. <laughs> I'm going to share that. Okay. Nope. It's just Instagram. <laughs> We're good. We're good. <laughs> it's all good. No worries. Okay. So let's go. So what, what would this be called? Like a cherry blossom bonsai tree? Yeah. Ch cherry blossom bonsai tree. I, I'm pretty sure they're like 800 bucks. At least that's what I've seen. Oh, bro. I was thinking, I was thinking maybe like 10 grand. This is, that is this definitely is. not. That, that looks like a picture. Yeah. These are uh, fake. Okay. Yeah. This isn't what we need. No, no. We're talking about like real shit that like, you know, blooms and blossoms. This is, this is also not it. Damn. Cause 80 bucks. I know you can do better than that. Yeah, there. I I have hmm. no idea how expensive they actually are, but that's definitely like within the vision. Okay, I uh, dude, I fuck with, I fuck with the bonsai tree, very mm. very cool and uh, maybe symbolic even plant. Absolutely, and, and I can see how. Indeed. Yes, yes. Okay. So okay, just talking about how you were a weapon, and then how that's going to transcend. Um, but yeah, so like, what do you think that would take form as like a video series of like how to rehab from like common injuries like ACL tear, like hip strains, back strains? Is that what you would do? Like, um, make it like a video series. It could it could be a part of it, but I'm really thinking about like integration with like artificial intelligence, mm. um, in 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 some way. Uh, the, the, one of the things I've really enjoyed the most about artificial intelligence is just like sitting down and brainstorming with it because like that thing can really help you with that stuff and just help you come up with like just random ass ideas. And then you can kind of think through like, if it will work and stuff like that. Um, so, so, so that's always a really, really good time. Um, I'm, I, I know there are still people out there that just like, don't use it at all, but it's like, it was a daily thing for me during school. like it's not like it was like doing my homework for me. Like it, it literally couldn't do my homework for me, but like just helped me like think and like, um, uh, I'll just like connect different ideas together and stuff like that. So it was like super helpful for me during school. Um, just in like studying and homework and stuff like that. Um, 
but Bro. of course it's like it, it's huge you should do a youtube video about like your process there because like yeah yeah like i kind of get I what use, you're saying but like yeah. yeah like how i use ai for for school. Bro, those videos pop off yep yep i wonder what i would use ai for Hmm. <laughs> why are you smiling like that bro i say give it like five years and i'll be able to use ai for that but <laughs> <laughs> no i'm kidding i'm kidding um yeah dude that's that's like really impressive that you do that just like intuitively like that's your that's how introspective you are and how like well thought out you are that's like pretty crazy man i don't know not a lot of people do that so it's, it's some cool shit man it's some cool yeah. shit i feel like a lot of people need to like at least like like get to know it and uh you know think of some crazy shit with it from the genius of max strosny <laughs> the genius yeah the genius Give me a man. fucking break <laughs> oh come on come on you're doing things out here max whether you want to admit it working or on not it, working on it. <laughs> so dude what is to come in terms of uh let's say training life out life in and outside of school like we talked about the path, but like, um, what, what are some of the next closer milestones for you to hit? Uh, closer milestones. Um, so I will be continuing vaulting until probably at least Christmas. I would say, um, I, I really think a extended off season is important for natural bodybuilders. So I probably won't compete again until, uh, maybe like 2025 or something like that. Um, I just really want to like be, much bigger by the next time I compete and by much bigger, probably like, you know, I'd be happy with another five to 10 pounds of muscle or something like that. Um, so, so that's really the the goal for that. So by Christmas, I want to be like two fifteen, which would be my first time up there. Uh, so that should be interesting. Um, and yes, yeah, school starts up in about a month. So I'll be back to school and I'll be, uh, I'll, like right now I'm doing a lot of work for RP of course. So uh, those exercise scientists react series. Uh, if you guys are seeing those on the RP channel, that is, uh, those are some of the videos that I'm doing, which are a ton of fun to edit. And did you make the uh, thumbnail um, for, for all of them too? I, I did not. The, 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 the <laughs> thumbnail for the, um, for the Kim Kardashian one. <laughs> In the Mark <laughs> Wahlberg one, one, we're like, what the fuck? Yeah, the, the Mark Wahlberg one's hilarious too. Yeah, uh, they're funny. No. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, that's so, that's so, so cool that you're doing those, man. They look great. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been a really, really good time. Um, I I've been like editing. Well, I've been like making YouTube videos since I was like like twelve or thirteen years old. So uh, like it's pretty sweet that that thing that well that skill that I learned is like finally paying off. Like yeah, I like in a big way now that I actually have a job. So uh, that's cool. Um, so yeah, just a lot of work for RP and hopefully starting to get my own social media back into the uh, swing of things as well i've really been kind of pretty lax on that recently but um happens you know i gotta prioritize making money and living life a little bit more than social media sometimes yeah dude that's a struggle it 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 really is a struggle like uh, uh social media is like also like one of those things like uh i don't know like uh uh like when you like it it it's really easy for social media to change from a hobby to like a job like when you start making money off of it like from my youtube videos i had like um um i like started making money at some point uh from my youtube videos with like my my big like uh transformation videos that have blown up Mm -hmm. and like it really went from feeling like from, from like being a hobby to starting to be a job because I was making money off of it. So I had to like rely on it, you know? Uh, so like that was a little bit like, eh, didn't really like it so much, but now like it feels a lot more like a hobby again. So um, I, I definitely will um, uh, be creating more content in the future. Not exactly sure if it's just going to be fitness content or if it'll be something a little bit different or at least like at least a more, a bit more reflective on, my life other than lifting too because i do a lot of other shit too so so yeah dude and you do it well so like under i like the direction there um i appreciate it yeah man i remember last like last year i feel like you were working with uh gorilla but you've kind of like switched up your supplements like sponsors right yes yep yeah i was with gorilla for quite a while i think like maybe over a year 
No, actually, yeah. like, I think two years. And then uh, you had yeah, that conversation I, with Derek where you were like, bro, you need to get your head in the game. You haven't uploaded in months. And he like cut you for that, right? Because you couldn't handle the accountability. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. <laughs> right. You right. and Derek just hashed like, it out. In person, in person too. Like we were in like suits at a business dinner. Andrew so Tate was there exactly how trying to tell you what it is to be a man. Because I feel like yep. him, him and Andrew Tate have had some run-ins or something. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay. So yeah. so talk but, yeah, about these supplements. We're, we're, Where can they find them? Legion now, you know. Yeah. Yep. What makes them special? Legion? Yeah. I like Legion because it's like very no BS company. Like they like, I uh, like their slogan is like, um, uh, you don't need supplements, but the right ones can help. I really like that because like you literally don't need supplements. Like, uh, whereas like a, a lot of other companies, um, will just like say that you need this for fat loss. You need this for muscle building, like shit like that, but you don't um like 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 save your money if you need to save your money you know so yeah uh yeah but the right ones can certainly help and make life a little bit easier like whey protein i eat it every single day really good whey protein um and uh like it makes my life a ton easier otherwise i'd have to like meal prep so much more Fuck that. yeah <laughs> yeah dude i respect that a lot like very few supplement companies are great anymore like very few i feel like and yeah, Legion is one that really sticks out. Like if you look at their ingredients, it's just like the main studied ergogenic aids. Like there's not yep. like a whole bunch of other stuff. And I mean, that way they can kind of keep it more affordable because like some of the pre-workouts out there that I used to buy, I just stopped buying them because they got to the point where it's like two to $3 a serving. It's just like, I'm just sick of putting money into this because like it's not that it's not that great quality like they're still kind of like skimping you even for the good ones so like a lot of respect yeah. for getting behind a good yeah. brand it's not not yeah. easy to do sometimes yeah yeah and also like with pre-workouts too like if i had to put like like a list together of the the important supplements like first to last like it would definitely be like probably like protein and then creatine and then like pre-workouts after all that and then all your fucking vitamins can go below that as well yeah like, um like that's just like like you don't need pre-workout like if you're you know i like manic enough if you want <laughs> to try to it right oh god dude yeah. that's 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 wild to me that that's a thing um yeah seriously yeah dude i cut out i cut out pre-workout like within the past probably six months no five months for the first time since mm -hmm. I was like 18. It's been eight years, bro. I was like addicted to Damn. cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> so much. So using much. that shit, David. I mean, like literally just about every session since I was like 18 or 19. No, it's 19. Yeah. So seven yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. I I almost just rock with uh just like stim free pre-workout now. Like I don't do any stims. Like when I have stims, it'll be like for work or for studying like i'll have stims yeah. in the morning just for that and then when i go to the gym i'll still be hyped up like i'm, I'm super caffeine sensitive and he snorts his adderall in the bathroom at the library don't let him lie to you absolutely <laughs> no i'm just kidding dude yeah, no, like like... I, I i i snorted a bit of cocaine before this podcast of course so. <laughs> he just bumped a little nose beer and hopped on the trainer stoop. <laughs> could you imagine yeah. <laughs> yeah no i think like honestly one thing i have like as i've seen you talk about it on social media is like your ideas around like uh stimulants and how that pertains to like having a healthy balance with it healthy sleep i feel like i've seen you talk about that a time or two and like mentioning how you use what's their non-stem pre-workout called at legion uh it's just a pulse non-stem yeah pulse non bro it's a good formula um great formula really. it, it, it is very good it's like also a pre-workout that actually has like beta alanine in it like i used to really not be a fan of beta alanine but i i i've like slowly be, became more of a fan of it again like it really kind of gets me in that like mode you know like oh, where dude. i'm kind of feeling like a crackhead oh really yeah that's a good thing every now and then bro so during covid i uh when i lived in new jersey for a hot second there was new jersey was closed up until september but there was this guy who was like illegally opening his gym um in philly 
in that gym was Iron Sport, where Dr. Mike and Jared and Charlie used to train back when they all lived in Philly. Right. Yeah, yeah. Fucking legendary gym, legendary dude. I would take a scoop of this. It was called Citadel Nutrition. It used to be a big supplement brand. They used to be on Amazon. It had a very good ingredient list. It had like 300 milligrams of caffeine and five or no, no, no. It was like six, maybe like 6.2 grams of beta alanine or something. And I would drink that on the way down to Philly. And sometimes you'd get caught in traffic and there'd be like stressful traffic get, getting over the bridges and there'd be accidents. And like the beta alanine makes you feel like you're a literal crackhead because like, I don't know, but like something about being in like that very elevated, like sure. parasymp- is it parasympathetic? Yeah, maybe. Sympathetic. Sympathetic, sympathetic. Being in that very elevated sympathetic, bro, it made my asshole tingle and I liked it. <laughs> Dude, I I could only imagine that would be a just an insane situation, like sitting in traffic, just like fuck. There, I remember seeing go. this episode of uh, Rick and Morty, where like they get off of like a string of adventures, and uh, they they just like the episode starts with them screaming, and they're like fuck, like oh my god, and they're like we almost died there, like I totally didn't have control of the situation, and like I'm like yeah, that's how I felt taking pre workout in Philly traffic to get to the gym which was like yeah. illegal to go to at the time. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I really think a, like a, a, a good relationship with caffeine in general is a really important thing because caffeine, like it's, it's such a prolific supplement. Everybody is addicted to that shit. Like everybody drinks multiple cups of coffee every single day yeah. and they can't imagine life without it. Like that's a problem. Uh, and I feel like people don't talk about it enough. Um, like I really think, well, like for me, the way I go about it is every time I deload, I just like don't have stimulants at all during that whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's reliably like every like five to eight weeks or something like that. So that's a regular time that I can like fully come off and make sure I'm getting enough sleep, of course, but like, it really like keeps me in the habit of getting enough sleep, which is really important for so many different reasons. Kind of that, like I outlined earlier in the podcast, just don't cut yourself short on sleepies and you're cutting yourself short in life. Boom. Drop that mic. Yep. Let's go. Yep. yep. All right, man. So, so we have a, uh, some middle term, I guess we could say not short. It's not long. We have some middle term goals as you uh, talk about what we're, what we're thinking until the next competition. Um, man, I have no, no doubt that you're going to keep killing it with all of the content that you do gonna keep killing it as you progress through school but bro is there anything is there anything you want to end on any uh final parting pieces of advice anything you want to close and wrap up Mm. um that's a great question um get house plans you get what? Get house plans. Get get house plans. Yeah. Let me introduce you to someone real quick. I think you guys are really gonna vibe. Oh. Dude, hey? let's go. Yeah, it's pot yes. broke. That's a that's a definite negative as I exit out of my Zoom. But yeah, man, this plant been rocking with me since 2020. Pretty nice. baller. Need to get him some new soil. Looks great, dude. It, it, it looks like it's doing well. Yep, I give him just the amount of attention, like just the tiniest bit. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing with plants. You don't really have to give them too much attention. Get a plant app and it'll like tell you when to water it and shit. Damn, bro, I didn't even think of that. This is why I'm telling uh-huh. you, Max, you're next level. <laughs> you think of these things. Get a plant app. <laughs> All right, bro. Um, I like that. I like that piece of advice. It's going to add to everyone's life. Um, it, it it just brings a lot of love into the space and you know a little bit of greenery everybody can appreciate some greenery you can't go wrong with that yeah dude, it's good for the mental a, health just gets us more connected with nature because we yeah. are nature yes bro did you uh did you see anything about my perennium sunning classes that i was hosting in indy <laughs> speaking about connecting no, with I, nature. I did it <laughs> yeah dude i was on a walk one day and like there's this like indie sign that like will randomly pop out at random parts throughout the city so people can like scavenger hunt it and like take a picture for their social media. It's like mm-hmm. a thing. And uh I it was like at a local park that I would walk by. And so I was like, oh, like I found the indie sign, gonna be hosting my perennium sun in class. 
here at the indie sign hit the link in my bio in the link tree links went up yeah. bro they went up nice. <laughs> oh my god but i didn't actually host the class because i probably got arrested for that <laughs> i would hope not david <laughs> <laughs> just assholes out <laughs> by the indie sign i mean dude dude it makes you happy i guess <laughs> you gotta make that bag baby <laughs> yep <laughs> where can people find you on social media max uh people can find me just at max Strazny, so it's s-t-r-a-z-n-y um on instagram on youtube and that's those are pretty much the two platforms i use the most i've like gone on threads a little bit but i haven't really done anything on there um but yeah, that's where you can find me uh hopefully wait plug the plug the, the codes because I know you got codes, bro. You got it like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate that. Uh, my 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 codes for everything are just like Max EPT. So if you want to save anything at Legion, uh, Max EPT will get you some money off and rewards points. And also, if you want to save anything at RP, um, Max EPT will also get you some money off there. So, Wait, what? What is what is it? Is it Max what? DPT. DPT. I thought you about said oh, did GPT. I say, did I say it too quick? No, no, no. I thought CPT? you were like, no, no, no. C- yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, this motherfucker, he's really about this AI life. <laughs> no, that's yeah, dope, bro. Max, eventually, doctor of physical therapy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not it's there yet, soon. but we'll get there. Yeah, I have no doubt, dude. Um, appreciate you for coming on for episode 72. It's been great to catch up, joke around a little bit, impart some wisdom on the people, too. I feel like this is overall a home run podcast bro i i love to hear that david thank you so much for having me on it's been a real pleasure uh always is a pleasure to talk to you and shoot the shit even if it's about your perennial sunnings but um dude <laughs> thank day. you for having me <laughs> all day all right man thanks again thank you all for listening if you're on youtube i'd really appreciate it if you subscribed and then went ahead and subscribed to max as well Ring the notification bell, like the videos if you're on YouTube. No, 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 I just did YouTube. If you're on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, hit me with a five star. Uh, Max has a podcast too, don't you, Max? You should, oh, I mean, shit. Yeah, I gotta do. I haven't posted on there in a long time, but it's uh, <laughs> it's Meathead University. Meathead University. I liked it. I listened to an episode. I liked it. Um, so right. check that out. Leave us five stars. Do whatever else you can do to help me because, goddamn, I, I really need something <laughs> to feel alive. Um, but we'll catch you in episode 73.